Uh, I was sound checking today, and Dominic from Vatican Shadows. I've known him for a long time. He's like, "How do you do it? Like, do what? Like, you're just like you've been doing that for years. How do you just continue doing that? It's kind of a disease, man. It's like a." fetishism or something, you know, for tone and color and sound texture. I just read that comment as, oh, I'm changing these things. And you still have like four stacks on stage, like full blast, you know. But for me, it's, uh, it's always changing anyway. I mean, it's just technical what's up there. All the frequency modulation and stuff it's it's kind of happening organically on its own as, as much as it is my playing <laughs> of the guitar that's probably what I focus on the most just the intonation because it, it's pretty delicate <laughs> and if it's um, you know if there's a problem there then it can ruin the possibility of getting into this state but to expect from an audience because I don't know what they expect it's like it's abstract music so it's quite subjective and you know it's quite loud and intense so maybe people are just not willing to take the step to have the patience to listen or to be in that sort of, I mean, it's quite physical too, so it's a, you know, it's a commitment to get deeper into the music. I mean, it's not so melodic, or it doesn't have a lot of these qualities of song and things like that, so. What 
thing I'm, I'm really interested in is raga music, and there's something about raga that I was reading um, where it is considered to be a high compliment to a musician if you almost fall asleep in the alap section of the raga. fall asleep in a movie, it means the movie's boring or whatever. It means you're not connecting with it. But with raga music, it means you're actually thinking about it in a deep way and you're allowing yourself to go into it and then you may get to that state that's very similar to the state of pre-sleep where your mm, subconscious is a little more present. You know? That moment before you fall asleep where you might have really vivid imagination. Like everyone walking with the Stephen O'Malley's just like... <laughs> it just had, like, they feel the noise coming out. They're just like, oh my god, it's so funny. Powerful, spiritual, profound visceral and heavy and loud and, and you feel it in in your gut you know it's I like high-fived you yeah <laughs> cosmic tones for mental therapy just made me feel good you know uh i i, I kept waiting for another another chord to to uh to uh, arrive and, uh, started off kind of just like with what you know, with one chord and it was like well i know i'm standing there going i know this is going to catch fire at some point but i'm not sure when for me it's more of like a microtonal thing the way just everything sort of swims together all the waveforms the low end and the treble and the mid-range it all just sorts of meets and makes this almost as if it's a full band after a while just the way it swims in your head there was one particular moment where i uh, just started thinking about like aspects of my life that have been part of me the last year and they choked me up at one point and and then it kind of just fl fl flowed through me throughout the show and and it was just like that constant it was just constant i've never felt so such a constant vibe from, from some instrument i guess this fantasy that I can try and go there when I'm playing as a player because the musicians also will be in that state of mind too you know One of my favorite things actually in the world is, is going to Japan and in Japan there's this phenomena which was bigger in the 50s and 60s but it's called, a, used to be called like a jazz kisa, kisa means cafe and now um, it's kind of mutated into rock and other, other genres but it's basically a small bar, so a small counter and there's the owner behind the counter who serves booze and maybe a few things to eat, but nothing fancy. And behind him is his entire record collection. And they're usually pretty big collections and usually quite specific. And you go in there and you sit down and there's only five people. You might not even know each other. And you sit there and you, you ask him, you can look at his collection or you can, some of them have them catalogued and there's a really good sound system and you pick a record and he plays the record and everyone sits down and listens to it and no one really talks and they just sip on a whiskey or, or a sake and listen and it's one of the most beautiful things and I actually live 
I, just, I love going to Japan to do that. I met Oren in 2002 or three. Actually, I was a fan of his records. And um, I was in New York and uh, someone asked me to DJ at a concert and uh, I went to the concert, I was psyched. I got a fog machine for my DJ set or whatever. It just between bands, you know, I was like, whatever, I'm gonna do, do something funny and play all this stuff with like really heavy bass. And he had released this record called Grapes from the Estate, really beautiful record, but it has really intense sub bass melodies and stuff in it and uh, I used to play it in my flat and it <laughs> it would uh, when there's transitions it would vibrate different parts of my flat so like as I got to know the record I'm like oh this song yeah it starts vibrating that cupboard in the kitchen or or the table you know as it moves around I became familiar with the physicality of it just in my own environment but I played a track off that record called Corkscrew and it set off the fire alarm in the club. And uh, they had to evacuate the club. And six uh, New York Fire Department trucks came to the call because they have to. They, they came to the club and it was a big mess. Like the show got canceled and stuff. And uh, the next day, I, I, uh, someone gave me Oren's email and I wrote him the story and I'm like, we have to work together. And he writes back, he's like, yeah, totally. We have to do that. Apart from MP3s and technology and the way people engage with music these days, I just think we've lost that. I just remember growing up in my early teens and it was almost like a ritual, getting a new record and my friends would come over and we'd just really sit down and listen to it and not talk and just listen to this thing and over and over again. And I really miss that. It really um, gives me a lot of energy for the rest of the year. That's how I like to listen to music actually. That's like the best. Yeah. And then we'll listen from up here. My father's a huge music fan, so when I was growing up as a kid, he was really into The Who and Zeppelin and Bowie and jazz, a lot of jazz, Miles Davis and stuff. So as long as I can remember, there's music in the house. Also watching shows like The Muppet Show. I saw a YouTube of Blondie on The Muppets recently, and it's just her and the band, the fucking animal and all those guys playing her music. It was really funny. But as a kid, you know, there's, there wasn't really a separation like, oh, these are puppets, this is a real person. It was just like, this is music that's really exciting and funny.
It was so quiet, though. It was like, I mean, we were up front, and it was still so quiet. Any quiet piece I've seen in recent years is always the outside cell phone noise or whatever other noise in the background. But I've grown to embrace that. If you have time to kind of, in your mind, to kind of like think about the situation and how much technology has absorbed all our lives. The space sounded incredible. Yeah. For, yeah, for, yeah. The, for the, what they were doing the resonance of the room and, and, and the acoustics were perfect. Um, but it was interesting that the amplifiers were, you know, pointed out away, not toward the audience, like out toward the glass windows and mm -hmm. then out into the, the uh, museum proper, not in, you know, toward the audience. So it was, it, was, it was funny the way that they were playing with the sound. For me, with the, those specific artists, Stephen and, and Oren and, and Kaiji as well, it's it's incredible to come to a festival where they're going to play multiple times over the weekend, and each piece is drastically different than the other. And you see this minimal drone piece that's just very delicate and and you know almost fragile, like you feel like it's going to fall apart at any minute. And then immediately, 15 minutes later, it's it's just another just wall of noise and and and. and you know, just amazing performance again. thing about the second piece that I that I noticed is they they each had scores that were that they were yeah, that really paying attention to and and yeah and then, then every little noise or sound or click you know change of their equipment was all predetermined you know but there is a, a, a variance of, of improvisation there but it was cool to see them you know really paying attention and using a score for something that you would normally listen to on record or, or vinyl and you know and, and go it just sounds totally random. And like I was mentioning to John, like like during the, the second piece, it's sort of like there's weird dust falling on me, and, and I think, oh, I'm looking up, it's not maybe the ceiling a bit. It's like little motes of dust from the ceiling coming up loose. Uh, I think that, well, they're like the Beatles, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> where each of them has their own musical personality. <clears throat> uh, uh, where um, O'Malley is into, to some degree, he's into like um, sort of big, big sounds big sounds, but also kind of blankness, like, you know, the idea of basically playing one note or one chord continuously for an hour. I think Oren Ambarki is really into sort of process music, like music that um, uh, grows and sort of goes somewhere over a period of time and changes, changes shape, changes identity. Um, I think he seems to be into that. And then, you know, and K.G. Hino is like, 
I cannot be named, I cannot be pinned down, I'm going to be as pure as imp an improviser as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Like, recklessly de dedicated to, to that cause. Do not name me! Do not name me! If you name me, I will not be ever again! I was living in Australia when I was around 18, 19. I used to save up money, go to New York, see as many shows, buy as many records as possible, and then my money would run out, go back home, and then do it again. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. I went to see this guy, KG Hino play, and there was probably only about 40 people, 35 people. And I was completely confused about what he did and but really blown away at the same time and intrigued where it just completely baffled me like, where did this guy come from and I actually decided at that point after seeing Hino that I was that I wanted to play the guitar I decided that I didn't want to play the drums anymore and from that gig, that was like a really life-changing moment for me. I, I booked, a, booked a show in Sydney playing guitar and everyone thought I was crazy because I actually didn't know how to play at all. But he just gave me this inspiration and courage just to try and do something different. Haino, his guitar playing in Fushitsusha, of course, huge influence on me as a young man and now I never thought I would meet him but in New York he came to New York and played a few concerts and I went to one of the concerts it was Fusha Tusha concert I went early because I knew the guy who was the door guy at the venue he's like oh you want to come to the sound check and I went to the sound check it's like you can't go inside why Haino is spending an hour breathing in all of the oxygen in the room and processing it through his body and exhaling it into the room. That's your sound check? Occupying the space with your own organism? How poetic is that? I think, as far as rock music goes. Because a lot of his music seemingly is very violent and very aggressive, but I was blown away because it had all of those characteristics, but then immediately the graciousness of how he was playing. Fuck it out! and the ambition to get to a state kind of similar, I thought, kind of similar to what I was talking about earlier, to like a, a peak state within the music. It, it was very transparent, it was very obvious. Blew me away.
crazed, uh, infernal, chthonic. Entirely based on traditions I've never even heard of, I'm sure. Uh, symbolic of things I don't understand. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? I loved it. It was beautiful. At times you're just really blissed out and you're in a kind of trance. And in other, uh, other parts of it can be uh, quite intellectual and cold and you can like go on flights of thought. It reminded me of being, being 16 and having a guitar for the first time. <laughs> Discovering a bottleneck in the third bridge. The variation throughout the show, just the amount of sound that he puts out in every single direction is absolutely fantastic. I actually walked outside to get some fresh air about halfway through the show, and the amount of people outside sharing their experiences about like, oh man, this part was really pretty, but then what the hell happened? Like, on multiple parts of the show, and no one agreed on which one was the noisy part. Like, um, kind of like you've been exercised. It really does. It feels like you know some sage has been waved over all your bullshit. Clean out. My receptors are being cleaned out. Water. Yep. You know. I'm fine. You want a bottle of water? Great, I'll grab it. Okay, I got it. Okay, and I can What were some of his earliest favorite pieces of music? I think I was the most favorite pieces of music. I think I was the most favorite pieces of music. I think I was the most だから、あの、すごくいつも言ってるあれだけど、自分が音楽をやるきっかけになったのはドアーズのドアーズっていうバンドのウェンザミュージックソーバー。ウェンザミュージックソーバー。自分が聞きたいものはとにかく自分が一
So Haino san was playing solo and Sun was playing and I was like Oren Oren you have to meet Haino. Like, oh I can't meet this guy, you know, it's a Prometheus moment, you know. Get too close, I'll explode or I don't want the source. A few years later, Oren, Haino and I were in Holland at the same time. And Oren suggested, why don't we do a show as a trio? I was like, wow, uh, I'd love that, but I can't play guitar on stage with you. It's too, too much. Why don't you and I be the rhythm section? It's like, I'll play drums and you play bass, and then we can just listen to Haino do solos, you know? It's, how great is that? When we actually play, I'm kind of happy to accompany him because I love what he does and I want to actually set things up for him just to do what he does, you know. That really, I'm happy to do that actually. Like someone on a film set just doing the lighting or just setting up the, the, the scene. Yeah, I mean, we both, we're both fans of his music, for sure. And, uh, and we also really get along. You know, I have a lot of fun with Heino. Um, he's a really funny guy, actually, and he's a very sweet man. And yeah, you learn a lot. And, I mean, he's the reason why I play guitar, and it's just kind of funny that I'm playing drums with him now. <laughs> it's kind of... I think all artists, well, I, I sometimes, um, you know, feel that, you know, maybe I'm not good enough or I don't know what I'm doing or do I have actually anything to say or, you know, I go through that all the time. Every time I make a, a solo record, it's total existential crisis. So sometimes working with someone who's kind of renowned or, you know, who you admire can be a little overwhelming at times, but, um, I don't know, I just try not to think, think too much, actually, and just, just jump in and do it. あの、二人の、二人の、初め好きだったかとか、一緒にプレイしてて。非常に微妙な質問だ。It's mm. very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> 今鍛えてます。he said, I'm training them. <laughs> good question, good answer, right? Cut. <laughs> One more, two, hey, hey. Front of house, talk back. Thank you very much, Al. Okay. Yeah, it's not ideal. I wasn't sure if we had a choice. それ <笑>あの、その、なんていうかな。例えば観光の話とか、そういうの全然しないで、ま、大概あのレコードを聞いたかとか、あれが良かったよとか、本当に音楽の話しかしないから、本当に、ま、僕から見たら本当に20もしただけ
Should I put a little in the subs or no? Uh, 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 Mexico once and playing at a festival and he was there as well and during the day I went to this museum and they had this CD collection of really old Mexican folk music and there was so many. I didn't know one from the other and I just bought like three or four thinking I'll, I'll see what this is like and later that night I went to Hino's dressing room and he'd bought the whole collection, you know, <laughs> all of them and he's just enthusiastic about stuff. ことばでは悪いけど、ジャムっていう軽いノリでは僕人と演奏しないから、そのたった一日で一時間であろうと、僕の中じゃこうバンドっていうまあ多分しばらく聞いてない日本語だと思うけど、こいつらと真珠すると
not totally sophisticated all the time I and mean, sometimes uh, someone's taking a solo and you lay back you know that kind of thing or sometimes Warren and I will have to develop something to encourage Hino to do a guitar solo <laughs> basically or or sing or you know. like even last night a few times um, the rhythm section will be doing something and I'll be thinking to myself, oh, this is so perfect for, for, for him. Get the guitar, get the guitar. And he just won't get the guitar. He'll just not do it. Like, he'll just pick up something else. There'll be parts where it gets more mantra, repetitive, you know, for a long time. But then there's also times where he's like, he'll do that and then he'll suddenly jump to something else very different. And he wants to change and explore. I, I, read, I read this, maybe it's wrong. It's just my perception of being with him in this environment of that moment. He wants to, yeah, like, he always wants something to develop or to shift, or to be unexpected or surprising. The <laughs> 自分のやりたいことをやってるだけだろうって見られがちだけど僕のやり方は音を出して大ジェンスの反応を聞くんじゃなくどんどんどんどんその場所の大ジェンスを会場を巻き込んでいくから巻き込んだものを一回自分に入
that I'm gonna be the only dude, like a couple hundred people up front. And uh, I try not to worry about that too much. And especially tonight, some, sometimes it gets to me more than other times, and I'll get uh, a little anxious about it. Tonight, I just didn't care. Just the way it is, sometimes it's like that. I just felt it enough, I think, actually. Um, and I knew that like, if I did not get up there, I was gonna be pissed off at myself like an hour later. Because you were kind of mirroring like his movements. I'm not actually close the whole time. That's one thing, like when I dance, I'm like super like inside myself. So I wasn't actually really looking at him. So if I was mirroring his mo movements, it was uh, a synchronicity of sorts or a coincidence. Or it was interesting. To, to think about it in that way because maybe there's something uh, more universal or objective about the music that was causing us to move in a similar way because I really wasn't looking at him the entire time. It's Y-O-S-H-I. Yoshi means that's, that's kind of a, that un in, in English. That it's the, you know, like you go to war, you know, or you just kind of decided to do something. That's Yoshi, and then also, and then when you accomplish something, that's Yoshi, it was good. You know, that satisfaction isn't in this fist. Right, Genkotsu. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'll just tell you what I think. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Tell us your thoughts about it. You know, I'm not any artsy, any, any person. And then I was really nervous that, that um, you know, I mean, I'll probably like him just fine. But, you know, I mean, he's famous and I'm just nobody. So I was just really nervous to do. But he was very kind and just very receptive. And then I got, all of a sudden, I got just, just, I don't know, it just, just feel really just crazy. And then I have this like a boiling experience and because that's how much he just loves what he does. And then, you know, every day, you don't see that kind of people often. And then there are certain things. Into the deeps where you can. 